For what it's worth, it's never too late, or in my case, too early, to be whoever you want to be. There's no time limit. Start whenever you want. You can change or stay the same. There are no rules to this thing. We can make the best or the worst of it. I hope you make the best of it. I hope you see things that startle you. I hope you feel things you never felt before. I hope you meet people who have a different point of view. I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you're not, I hope you have the courage to start all over again. F. Scott Fitzgerald FX presents the Ending Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indubians. I am T. Sterling Watson. This is the Indu Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, this particular episode is, uh, I have a very special guest, uh, the lovely, lovely Miss Courtney Hinton. Um, we talked for quite a while, so I had to do some little creative editing and uh, break up what was almost, I think, a two-hour conversation because I don't really want these podcasts to be longer than two hours or not even really an hour, but w- whatever. I basically broke up the conversation because we had a lot to discuss. Um, Courtney has a business that she's starting, and she is an active tweeter and photographer and just all-around creative person. So without much further ado, uh, right after this break, actually, we're going to jump right into that conversation. Um, make sure you stay tuned for the next episode where she'll be back to discuss a new Netflix show. In fact, I think the next episode after this one is probably called uh, uh, Netflix because we talk about uh, Sense8, and we talk about actually all the other shows except for uh, Orange is the New Black, because, um, well, it's more me not talking about it, but I'm just talking about the new Netflix shows, but she happened to be on talking about Sense8, so if you want to hear about that, then you have to wait for the next episode. Hopefully by then you'll have enough time to catch up on everything, and then you can join in on our discussion and get back to all of us. So in the meantime, enjoy. Hey, it's DJ Joe Daddy, not Joe Daddy, bringing you the hits you missed and never heard. Y'all gonna hear it right here on WIDB 129.5. Hey! Now, for tonight's weather, dark. Better turn on your headlights, because it's gonna be dark. Also, a little chilly. Coming up next, Sister Sparrow in the Dirty Birds with Sugar. <laughs> Thank you. 
to the Indu podcast. Um, I have a special guest with me, uh, Courtney with a K, Hinton. Oh, which, get that right. <laughs> yeah, I know, which I, I actually really do like because I've run into quite a few Courtneys in my in my years, and you're the first one that spells it with a K. Really? Yes. Are there other? I guess that's a, yeah, there, I know. Actually, it's, it's spelled without a U as well, so I know... Just a handful of other Courtney's who spell it exactly like me, but quite a few that spell it with a K. I think, I think everybody's just trying to be different. I, I guess I don't know. It's working. It's working. I I, allow, I approve. I, I applaud. I like it. Okay. Because well, usually... as long as I have your approval, that's that's all that matters. Right. Right. Because and you're not the other Courtney with the actually with the U and ends with a Kardashian, so <laughs> that's good too. So we're good. <laughs> Right. <laughs> not opposed to not talking to her, but I prefer talking to you than, than her because I really have nothing to talk to her about right now. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. So just just an off-the-wall kind of question, just to warm you up to um, at least the Indubian slash uh, former lost dialian um, procedure, I would ask these questions. It's just two questions. And I didn't prep you for this for this very reason, because they're like, what What are you about to ask me? I know you're getting nervous. I hear you shaking again. Um, oh, please. If you were a muffin, what kind of muffin would you be? Blueberry. Oh, wow. Nice. Good answer <laughs> right away. Why would you say blueberry? Because that's just the one of the best flavors for sugary treats. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll allow it. Good mm-hmm. answer. Follow-up question, somewhat, uh, maybe not follow-up, but semi-related question. Now, this is something exclusively that we did with our last few guests we had on Lost Style. But if you were a Ben and, not Ben and Jerry's flavor, but if you were to able to create one, what would you have? Oh, I have to create one? Mm-hmm. Uh. They were at your disposal. They decided, uh, Courtney with a K, we would like to make a Ben and Jerry's flavor. What do you want us to make? Okay, so this is going to sound really weird, and it's not my answer, so I don't know if this counts or not, but I was my first thought was pizza, but I don't think pizza-flavored ice cream would be good for anyone. Mm. Um, so, I don't... It cheesecake? might. Uh, well, maybe? cheesecake? There may be a cheesecake Ben & Jerry's already, though. I don't know. They have a chocolate cheesecake, because um, I, oh. I had it, and I kind of didn't like it, and it ended up being in my freezer for way too long. <laughs> um, as for pizza flavored, I would say maybe because you still have dairy in there. It's just sure, the tomato sure, but part. But there's meat and tomatoes and, you know, yeah. bread. You know, I don't, let's well, just strike that. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll workshop that one. And then if you had a second, <laughs> second guess, maybe perhaps. Um, oh goodness. Let's see. You have 30 seconds. I'm kidding. You don't. 30 seconds. Oh. <laughs> I think it would be cool to have some of my favorite cereals as ice cream, maybe Cap'n Crunch mm. or uh, what's the, what's the chocolate? Um, Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa Puffs, yes. You mm. are a woman after my own heart because I've been wanting this forever, and I haven't. Have not done that? I thought somebody had done that. The closest I think I've ever seen is um, cereal bars like they have like maybe okay. some milk or dried up milk in uh-huh. the bar which are delicious yeah so it's uh i mean i still eat them but still it's uh it's not ice cream already in the cereal <laughs> i do this on my own i have a nice bowl of vanilla ice cream and i sprinkle the cereal on top really yep i've, I've been doing that for a couple of years until one of the cereals actually broke one of my tooth teeth because oh, so. it was too cold no, it's just because like that tooth was just already weak. And uh, it was a really like it was cinnamon toast crunch, my one of my favorite cereals. So uh, now that it kills me, I don't eat it as much <laughs> because it's dangerous. Because it's you don't want to partake in food that is hazardous to your health. That's never a good 
thing not, ever. Not really, but I do, like, uh, every once in a while I, I indulge. Like, okay, I'm going to live on the edge. I'm going to have a hearty bowl of cinnamon toast crunch. I'll leave a <laughs> lifeline out and, you know, I have my gotta, phone. I mean, you you do have to live sometimes. Yeah, you, know? you do. You Life do. is too short. Just have your phone ready in 9-1, and then just in case <laughs> something happens, you're good. Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> So you are a very interesting person after, um, I don't know, the past couple weeks, years. I've known you for years, it feels like. Probably um, more like a lifetime, I feel like. Pretty much, uh, even though I I'm just like to brag that I am older. But, um, you know, I've, I've um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're doing so many lovely things. We're going to start with the thing that hasn't happened yet. It's on the way. Um, you're uh-huh. starting a new business slash blog thing. Um, mm-hmm. What is that? But tell, tell me. What's going on with that? So, disclaimer, when I say blog and business in in this situation or this scenario, I I might use them interchangeably because the blog, the actual blog where I will post content once or twice a week will focus on um, content for creatives or those who want to be more creative, basically living a a full creative life, like to the... uh, basically a, an abundant creative life every every day mm. whether they you know um see themselves as a creative person or not there's always ways that you can fit that in you know put get that into your life more um as well as i i love to write about personal and professional development uh whether that's business related or you know doing your best on the job that you have that kind of thing so that's what the actual blog will um, will focus on. Um, hopefully, that will that will fan out into like eBooks and products and even wearable things um, that I'm still just kind of shooting around ideas for. Um, the blog itself will also be an extension of um, the right the I guess the more businessy part, the part where I will have clients um, where I create. Um, copy for them and content for them whether they're a small business owner like myself or um, whether just they're just someone who wants something written for them like perhaps if it's a wedding and they need a special specially written poem for their special day something like that or have their vows um, written for them <laughs> yeah yeah I'm down for that I've never done that before but I, I would be open to that idea but just things like that um, so that's the short answer it was a good answer too, because um, that you uh, now the creatives just just so people are on the same page. You're talking about the, uh, people who might be doing writing, or photography, or just anything that they they like to do, but also have maybe a day job that's and you're trying uh, to yeah. help them. Yeah, because most of us do have day jobs or several jobs, you know, and and it can be hard to to fit creativity into their life, whatever that means for them. Um, like I said, whether it's writing or photography or underwater basket weaving or whatever, it whatever makes them feel creative or makes them kind of get in touch with, I don't want to get too hokey, but their spiritual side. I mean, cause I think creativity is spiritual and it's something that we have to we have to have as humans. We have to we have to be creative, or we get stagnant. I really believe that. So I totally how, agree as well. That's, and that's I told you about thing. my basket weaving. Yeah, no, we're just on the same page, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yes. <laughs> my my collection of baskets I keep in the closet, and occasionally the bad ones I have to burn because I don't want anybody to see them. I don't want anybody to put any you know anything in them because they're, they're not ready. That bad, huh? yeah, yeah, they're not ready. They don't hold anything. So. I tried putting, you know, my, my little chief in there, but he just fell out. So I was like, oh, this is another basket to burn. So, But um, <laughs> does definitely sound like a great business, and I definitely will promote it more once it starts getting going because you are planning on doing that next month? That's the plan, yeah. July 19th is the plan. Ooh, got a countdown date, too. Yeah, I have to. If I don't have a goal, I'm, it'll, I'll continue to put it off and... You know, I'll I'll let myself down. Mm. Are <laughs> so you I'll good with up. staying up to date with like with do- with goals and deadlines and? Um, I wouldn't say I'm good at that, but I am. I understand the principle behind it, so mm. I, I definitely have to have some kind of agenda or some kind of plan 
for any type of large project. Really, I say any type of large project, but I benefit no matter what I'm doing, especially if it's something I don't want to do. I say, okay, well, I'm just going to do this thing I hate for an hour, and then after that hour, I'm done. Right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm trying to get better at it, and I know I have to be because – you know, time is limited and my energy is limited and I, I want to make the best use of it um, with what I have. So I have to, I have, I, like, I have to set a deadline or it just won't happen. Right. I'm, I'm with you. Even though sometimes I will set a deadline, I think for me it's easier if I'm actually working with someone because then I have to be... Mm-hmm. You're accountable. Right. So, so such mm-hmm. as this appointment here because if I'm like, well, I'm going to record later today... And that might not happen. But if I have to record with someone else, then it's like, okay, it's got to get done. Yeah, but, yeah. Very so, true. Yes. And you also have another business which actually <laughs> requires you to be with other people. Unless you are, um, well, you have a photography business. Uh-huh. Which, um, I mean, I've visited the website and it looks, I mean, you do amazing work. Thank you. Um, and you've been doing that for three years now? Yeah, a little, little over three years now, yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And how did you um, get into photography? Well, I always it was it was really a quick decision, honestly, because I had always been interested in it and um, enjoyed it and loved looking at beautiful images, and I and I could you know see something and say, oh, that's yeah. it. Just I would connect with it, mm-hmm. and and it I, I had played around a little bit with photography, but I. It wasn't until January of 2011 that I said, you know what, I could do this as a business. And that was just it. And I just kind of jumped into it. I had always wanted to be an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. but I just wasn't sure how to do that. I mean, I can remember when in my younger years, hand making certain things and wanting to sell them to my family. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they like wouldn't buy it, but whatever. I've been there too. Although the last time I did that or the first time I remember doing that I was actually in the fourth grade and I gave my family um the prettiest buttons I could find but so I didn't actually make anything but it was uh but you had that that entrepreneurial spirit right 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 and uh I think it was probably maybe that same year or a year after that I um tried to start a business um renting video games to my friends so (laughs) So it's, hey, that's a lucrative business, though. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it happens now. There's businesses that do that now. Exactly. Uh, Gamefly, I think. And you don't even have to leave your house. It'll send them right to you. Uh-huh. Exactly. So, you were on the right track. I was, but I decided I got out of the gaming business. It was too competitive. Uh, just <laughs> keeping up with the game systems and the games that were coming out. I just, uh-huh. I didn't, there was enough, there was not enough time for playing the games and my, my studies Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was that deep in high school. But actually, no, I stopped. Uh, yeah, I stopped a little before high school. My my regular gaming habits. Mm-hmm. Uh, but nowadays, I mean, you can program games for phones, and I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. just it's too beyond me right now. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, uh, but that's how I started, and I've been at it ever since. Wait, are we talking about photography or gaming? Photography. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you a gamer? It's- I'm actually, you know, I'm glad you asked because I'm starting to get into the whole gaming sphere, I guess. Mm. And, I, you know, the I think the only thing that's kept me from doing it is because when I started, I know that I'm going to really enjoy it. And I just don't have, I don't know, I don't think that I have the time or the finances to spend on that yet. But let me tell you my favorite game that I've only played one time. Okay. And it was actually my favorite game before I played it. Um, but that's Assassin's Creed. Hmm, okay. So those uh, are the kind of games you like, or? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not enough of a gamer to really answer that question fully, but I don't know why that game has stuck out to me. I, I, the art on it is, is just beautiful. I love the concept of it. Um, the story? I, well, yeah, the, the concept, yeah. The, yeah. the story, the, the characters, the... Um, there's history behind it, which, you know, makes you just automatically feel a little bit smarter. Hmm. It's just a good, it's just really neat. And I've, like I said, I've only played it once, <laughs> but hmm. I love it. But you're already a fan and then I'm you would already, already... I, and I've been a, a huge fan, like I said, even before I was able to find someone who had the game to where I could play it. I would watch like <laughs> the, the walkthroughs on YouTube and, wow, you know. Wow, that's, 
That's a serious love of the it's, game before you actually. You know what I'm it. saying? I even have like, uh, you know, I, I collect. I love film scores and and um, you know the scores and films and TV shows and stuff like that. The instrumental, and Such I even a have a couple of um, Assassin's Creed scores. All right, I did call you a nerd just now, but did in, you? in a good way I because it. I mean that's one of the things that we communi- are connected on, uh-huh. um, or the blurred actually is what we are. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. Uh, I'm definitely that. Yeah, um, as am I. Um, now this actually was kind of leading one way, but uh, we'll get we'll get back because I actually wrote it down. But um, the the film scores and just the cinematography is. I mean, a bunch of things that I, that's what I really love about movies and just Mm -hmm. how all of those things connect and even behind the scenes, finding out that there's so many people, so many arts and talents involved in making these things as what they are. So, I don't know, beautiful? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I agree. Yeah, so uh, Assassin's Creed is also, I guess, going to be made into a movie shortly. I heard, yeah. I don't know much about it, I... I just I just haven't put the time into researching it, but I'm very very excited about it. Hmm. So I don't know, I don't know. I feel like I'll be coming at it from an outsider looking in because I haven't really invested a lot of time in the actually playing the game. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. Hopefully yeah. by hopefully by that time it comes out, um, you'll find some time in your busy schedule to play the game uh-huh. a little bit. Uh huh. Hmm. Or first get a gaming system and then play the game. Right, that too. <laughs> have to right. do that first. But Anyone you're looking at yet, or that's still too far in the future? And you have, you've, got, you've got a lot on your plate as it is. I, I know, but and this is just one more obsession. But I'm looking at a, getting a PS4, probably. Okay, okay. I think the last time I was looking, I might have might have been looking at a Wii, because the only game that I, I truly, truly enjoy and can play for hours is um, uh, Smash Brothers. Because mm-hmm. I just, I don't have a lot of rage or anger, but if I <laughs> do, then that's that's where I would get it out and just you know beat people up or a racing game like um, uh, Burnout, which the last time I played it was on an Xbox, mm-hmm. the old Xbox. I guess Xbox One is what they're calling it now. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, just uh, a racing game that includes uh, being able to blow up your opponent's car. So, so I remember a little bit about Smash Brothers. Yeah, it's it's a lot of. It's a lot of fun. I just like destruction, but contr- you know, um, where not, nobody's actually hurt. Right, not inhumane. Right. Destruction. When it's Assassin's Creed, they they kill people. <laughs> right. So in case you have any like coworkers that you just imagine their <laughs> face on that character and take them out. So I'm I'm not. I don't condone this type of thinking. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, this is, this is a way you can project, you can get your rage or any um, just anxieties or uh-huh. just stresses out. That's, that's, it, that's okay. That's, that's allowable. I'm not, again, I'm not necessarily saying, you know, this, this is a healthy way to get things out. Okay. Better than, you know, going out and, you know. Doing, Actually. You're right. Exactly. Because I wouldn't get in my car and just go, you know, ram into some other cars because that costs that's money. Not, yeah, that's not cool. No, at all. not at all. No. So that's why video games are there to help. I, I think that it's there to help people. Because once you're done, you, you feel a lot calmer. Like, wow, that was fun. I feel good now. I can go out and be, you know, conduct a productive citizen in the world. Because um, you're good. And then maybe true, have some ice true. cream cool down. You're good. Yeah, ice cream with... Cinnamon. With cereal. Yeah. 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 Um, now I'm not sure how to segue back into... <laughs> I think from Assassin's Creed, you said it was like storytelling, but you also like to tell stories of your own. Um, And I believe you are a pretty big fan fiction writer. I'm more of a consumer of fan fiction, but I have written some fan fiction of myself or of my own. Um, Hasn't been really published because it's just no good, I think. But yeah, sometimes I will put pen to paper in that in that aspect. But you when do I, create your own stories, as, as um, you had last mentioned, which, uh, uh, NaNoWriMo, I believe? NaNoWriMo, yes. Nano, oh, Nano, I never heard it pronounced out loud, I've always seen it written. Um, well, you know, it's, it's funny, sometimes people do pronounce it, you know, the way you did, I just don't like that. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is a tomato tomato type thing. Actually, a better example would be pecan, uh, pecan, pecan. I like pecans. Pecan? Pecans, yes. Oh, gosh. Where did you hear that nonsense from? I decided to bring that nonsense to the table. Oh, gosh. And I say it to people and see how well they catch on. I led you up to it. I could have just said, oh, do you like uh, pecans in your ice cream? And then you're <laughs> like, hmm. I'm not sure what that is, so I don't know how to answer. But now that you know what pecans are, you can always keep that in the back of your head. Uh, now every time someone says it, I'm going to think pecan, and I'm going to just cringe on the inside. <laughs> oh, you're cringing now every time I say pecan? I'm, I'm, I'm cringing. Mm. Don't, don't, mm-hmm. don't, don't hurt your face, but pecans. <laughs> uh, I don't like pecans, oh, by the way. Uh, and one of my favorite animals, just this is a side note, is a giraffe. So, you know, I like those as well. So. Please, now you're just going too far. No, that was actually, that's actually a first one that I've made up. Well, not made up, but I've heard it on a cartoon. I can't tell you where because I don't remember. But oh, Lord have mercy. They, <laughs> they said giraffe. And I'm like, oh, that's it. That's now my, oh, that's my favorite pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, that's a pet peeve of mine. Can you tell? <laughs> We're going to move it, back to uh, NaNoWriMo. Rimo. Yes. yes. And to, because uh, you did ask a question before, and I have not participated, but I am aware of it. And um, the closest I've ever done was a, f- a small cluster of people. That's not really the word I meant to use. It's just because I, uh, a TV show, which we'll get into a little bit later. But um, a group of friends of mine, we... Uh, enjoyed writing screenplays so I guess during that uh, that month which I'll back up again Nano Remo's National uh, Writers National, National Novel Writing Month that's the words I forgot um, that happens during November uh-huh. and uh, instead of my group of friends writing novels uh, we wrote screenplays instead mm-hmm. Okay. so I did participate but not really not, I didn't really participate, uh, and I haven't really since, but I'm always aware of it, and I try to encourage people that I know that are doing it, like, hey, where are you at? How many pages? Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, it's a lot of fun. So so they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's a lot of fun because, as you know, I'm sure writing is, can be a pretty solitary thing to do, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, most things that you do with a group of other like-minded people is just generally more fun and, and more bearable. Right. Um, so it's really a lot of, it's a lot of fun, and, you know, it's, it can be challenging for the American participants because, as, as you know, no, uh, Thanksgiving is in November. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. I do have a problem. I forget holidays, but, um. <laughs> well, Thanksgiving is in November every year. Okay. And, and, and usually around be, the end of the month? Yeah, roughly. Oh, okay. Roughly around the 24th or so. Um, and really, that's crunch time for, for a writer who's been doing it all month, or even if they join late, or if they missed a few days or whatever. Mm. You know, so it, it can be challenging, but, you know, I think I told you before, uh, I subscribe to the school of thought that creativity thrives under constraints Mm. and you know that's this is the perfect or one of the best examples of that because you only have 30 days you can't start until midnight november 1 and you have to stop you have to in order to reach the goal you have to um be done by midnight november technically 11 59 of november 30th so with, you know, work obligations and holiday obligations or what have you. Um, so there's a lot of obstacles, um, you know, that you're that you're facing, but it's so much fun. Are there consequences if you go beyond? Uh, oh, that? no. Oh, okay. oh, no. And then you have because there's several people that will write, you know, 100,000, 200,000. It's and that's pretty extreme, but there are people who do it and they they do it regularly. So. Oh, that's good. That. Yeah. If anything, I guess it's it's great to at least get you started. Yeah. That's yeah. sometimes my problem is just getting started. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's definitely. Um, I mean, because even fifty thousand words is not a full novel, and it's just a, the way that I've come to look at it is just it's just getting that first draft out, mm. which is like you said, often the hardest part is right. getting started. So. So yeah. Do you find editing yourself, like, uh, not necessarily a problem, but maybe something you run into often where you try not to self-edit yourself, or you... Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. That's a part of my process, and I'm sure other writers can relate. I'm sure they do relate. But with with NaNoWriMo, you have to just write. It's all about quantity, not quality. Hmm. Because, you know, if you're aiming for 50,000 words in 30 days, that roughly that roughly breaks down to 1,000. It's right at 1,700 words, but I think the actual number is like 1,667, something like that. Um, but you, you just don't have time to, to stop and edit. Now you can outline and everything beforehand and you can do all the research and, um, but you just can't actually write words to be counted towards that 50,000 until the first. Um, but you, you know, you don't have time during the month to write. And I know that with me, that's something that I struggle with constantly. It's something that I just have to continue to, um, uh, just work on, be mm. be aware of, but work on it and work through it. Because um, I think it's natural to want to edit the words and yeah. edit yourself. And I mean, I'm I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I'm trying to get over that as well. Because you just can't do that and be creative. Right, right. Um, but you know, it's definitely something I'm that's always there that I'm just constantly working working past. I I completely agree. Because just as an editor, or even uh, creator, I guess, uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to just recording, like, voiceover stuff. Mm-hmm. If I screw up one word in, like, the third sentence, I'm going to record the whole thing all over again. So, yeah. Which yeah. I've already done on this podcast. Not this one that we're recording right now, but mm-hmm. I've, I've done it enough times where, oh, I screwed up the last line of the three paragraphs I was reading. and Yeah, yeah. And then you just go back and listen to it again, and it's just sounding horrible. Or maybe right. you just go back and read what was like, what was I thinking? So, mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. so I, well, I, I mean, you know, like you said, I just it's as cre- as a creative, I think you just to add to that, I think you know you're so close to your whatever you're working on, and you're you love it. It's it's your passion and. You want it to be right. You want it to be presentable to mm-hmm. the public or to the world. And so if you think that it's even off just a little bit from your expectation, then you just automatically want to scrap it and, and start over. Right. Um, but that just, you know, what I've learned because I'm, I am the textbook case student of doing that. Um, but I, what I've learned is that just that keeps you from moving forward and building off of what you have out there. So I say that and I'm, I'm talking about myself too. (laughs) (laughs) And you've been doing this, uh, or at least the NaNoWriMo uh, for since 2007. Uh Mm Uh-huh. And it's, hasn't been getting like, hmm. well, the way you described it actually sounds kind of competitive, but in a good way. Yeah. Well, cause you're competing against, Nobody, I guess, but yourself. Right. Um, and even, you know, I've told people that I'm doing it, and they're like, so what is your prize? Or what happens if you win? <laughs> and there really is, I mean, they do have some neat goodies, that, like discounts off of writing-related um, programs or software or what have you. So there's stuff like that, and then you get this neat certificate. And, I mean, you get stuff, but it's not in the sense of, um, you know, you get money at the end or you get... You're not trying to do you, it to get a prize. Well, yeah, I mean, in the past to me is that you've actually written 50,000 words in a month. I mean, how many people do you know um, that can say that, that they've written a draft of a novel or a novel, however they want to, um, or whatever they're working on? Mm. Um, how many people can actually say that? So you, you get the bragging rights with that. Um, and if you're writing for publication, that's a, a pretty major feat to get, you know, that draft finished. Mm-hmm. Because, again, it, that's the hardest part of it is just getting it out there. So, right. So you so have yeah. bragging rights for the last, uh, last six years? Wait, seven years. Seven, yeah, seven-ish years, something like that. Yeah, I've only not won in a one time, and I still remember the feeling of not winning it because – um, not only am I a participant, but in the, in the past, what is it, 2015, in the past, I think, three or four years, I've been a municipal liaison, which means it's, it's basically your, the region or the, the chapter leader. Hey. So, so that means we, um, me and now I do have another co-ML um, is what we call them for short. Um, but for the first time I was an ML, um, 
you know, I'm responsible for making sure people just sending out motivational emails or messages and making sure this the site, the NaNoWriMo headquarters site is working properly for everyone. Uh, we schedule write-ins during the week and on the weekends or just kind of whenever it works for everyone, which means we just get together and write for a specified a, amount of time. Um, we do a kickoff party as well as a thank goodness it's over party at the very end of the month. Um, and so, I, you know, I'm just responsible for um, organizing that. So the first year I was an ML, I put a lot into, you know, and I didn't overdo it, but I, I was more invested, you know, in a different way. And so I put more into being that leader and organizing the stuff and just other things had happened during the month that I didn't reach my goal. And I was, I was maybe, I think 10,000 words short. And I just remember like, it was such a, such a horrible feeling because I knew I had done my best, but I, you just you know, didn't make that goal. I didn't make the goal, and it was just not cool. So I just was like, I've kept that in my mind um, ever since, ever in, in the subsequent years, and that's really helped me to, you know, when I don't feel like writing or I, you know, am just being hard on myself, I, I think of that year like, okay, Courtney, do you want to feel like that again? Do you want to feel like you're letting yourself and everyone else down? Obviously, the answer is no, so that was my motivation to keep to keep going even if like writing was the last thing that I ever wanted to do in life ever again. I still had to do it if I wanted to meet the goal. Mm, right. Wow. That's <laughs> definitely motivating to me too. Just hearing that. Cause actually I didn't even know that they had, um, uh, I don't know, leaders or uh -huh. the, the positions, the positions that you had. I didn't even yeah. know that existed. Yeah. I thought it was just, uh, I was like, okay, everybody, Right, and then you know that was <laughs> everybody's <laughs> yeah. off on their own. But well, that's one reason the the leaders of the MLs exist is because National Novel Writing Month is headquartered online, meaning uh, people from all over the world sign up through the site and they put in their word count goal or they put in their like novel information if that's available. And there's forums and things that you can go online and talk to other people and you know just it's it's a, a community online. But in order to help people um, feel more connected and stay accountable to the word count goal, um, that's where the MLs or the municipal liaisons come into play so that you can actually talk with someone mm. in your region, whether that's online or if, you know, you do like we do and meet up mm -hmm. multiple times throughout the month. So it just really makes it a, a, a community, a more of a community event Um and I, I love it. It's great. That is, uh, because, that is very awesome. As you can see, I'm a very, I'm a definitely a, a um, evangelizer for NaNoWriMo. And so, you know, being able to help other people's experience um, be the best it can be is it's just that much, that much better. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's, that's really quite great, actually. Um, Are you motivated to sign up and do it? Um. I will. I'll, you'll have to get back to me, because um, I don't. I might. I might. It's, I'll put it's it that still way. Still a little early. I'll, I'll keep working on you. Yeah, because it, it's. We're just breaking into summertime, and mm -hmm. um, I mean, because I I recently just found a couple books. <clears throat> um, one is like an artist guide, um, that a friend sent to me, and I, it's actually a friend that does participate. Uh, I think almost every other November, mm -hmm. um, but she sends me books. One is like an artist guide. Another or two of them are, are screenwriting guides. So I mean, since lately I have all this free time on my hands, then maybe I should start writing something. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's definitely something I, I will consider this year. Okay. I, I'm full of ideas, and they just need to come out. So maybe November might be a good time to just put pen to paper or finger mm -hmm. to keyboard. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll consider it. For sure. I'll take that. I'll take that. Okay. Because it won't, won't be a straight no. Because uh, <laughs> that, that'll just like kind of break something in my heart that I didn't even know was there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> helps a little piece of me dying a little bit. <laughs> um, so now I guess we'll, we'll kind of, I'm trying to save the, the big thing that we've kind of been uh, geeking out over for the past week. I'm trying to save that for a little bit laster. 
I'm, I'm ready for it. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know <laughs> that you are. Um, although I did ask you a question just to prepare some kind of uh, something, uh, some kind of guilty pleasure TV shows or movies that you... Uh, I don't necessarily want to say that you're ashamed to admit that you watch or enjoy. <laughs> you did mention one of them, and, and we kind of, uh-huh. uh, quote-unquote, came out of the, the closet of that. But uh, <laughs> we, we can leave that in the closet if you want. Yeah, you can... No, let's let's do it. Okay. I'm, um, I'm at peace. You're at peace with it? <laughs> uh-huh. I had no problem admitting it, and I've already told people, like, uh, I recently went to go see Pitch Perfect 2 because I enjoyed the first one. I enjoyed really? the second one. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm not, uh, that was, that's nothing I consider to be in the closet with. I even uh-huh. told people, like, some, some guy was actually like, oh man, that, I couldn't get five minutes within that movie. He's like, really? It was a really good movie. It was fun. It was funny. <laughs> I enjoyed uh-huh. the characters, even like the songs. I'm not big on musicals, but it's just the presentation of it. Mm-hmm. That it was not the guilty pleasure I meant to uh, talk about because. I don't really consider that one a guilty pleasure. Maybe it is. Maybe because um, they're not assuming I would be. But um, we discussed yeah. uh, Twilight being a uh-huh. guilty pleasure of a film, which the very first time I watched it, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and then I ended up watching it again. I think maybe, I don't know why I watched it again, but I, I did watch it again, and then I watched it with uh, some friends. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, before I knew it, when the last two came out, I was actually in the theater. Not the, not the night before. I wasn't that, you know... <laughs> Uh, wasn't that uh, into it, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I was still there while I was in theaters. Sure, sure, yep. <laughs> sure. Uh huh. I have witnesses. Uh okay. Yeah, well, one of them cannot testify you. because they're not of age, but you know I have witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I agree with you. I love Twilight, and you know I say it's my guilty pleasure because I'm I also make fun of it. Mm-hmm. the way other people make fun of it because it's it's definitely not a flawless masterpiece it's not the most solid story I've ever heard or, or read because you know but I just, it's one of those things where I, I just I love the characters for the most part I love the story for the most part well, um, I'll just drop in for a sec you said flawless do you think Edward woke up that way <laughs> I mean with the hair just oh, nah. so much hair I have so many issues with Edward, though. Well, Robert Pattinson's Edward. He's not as horrible in the books. I've read the full, the all the series, or the you know all the books in the series, mm-hmm. and he's not as stupid and <laughs> you know terrible in the books as he is in the movies. Um, <sighs> these these are those issues that you're saying it's not a, a perfect masterpiece, but. Mm. No, I'm, well, I'm saying it isn't. It's not a perfect masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination at all. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just has really good qualities. I think it's a good story. It's I like the way it's told. I like the world that it's set in. Mm-hmm. You know, vampires obviously are are not new as far as writing is concerned. So it's just a different I'm, take on it. It's just a different take on it, and I and I like this take. I don't love the sparkliness of the vampires. <laughs> That's kind of cheesy, but you know, it's it's I, I can suspend my disbelief um, in, in that way. I can do that. Mm, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so you that were well, you just talking about that kind of world? Because normally, I guess with vampires, always in some kind of Transylvanian atmosphere right. or ca- castles and right right and, now right. and in the woods and seattle not seattle um washington i think well they're in they're in forks forks yeah. washington which is a real place oh okay it is a real place but i think it's a little bit um like a couple hours from seattle something like that hmm. so yeah yeah it's it's, it's just it's, different it's very it's just different right and i, I like that different so um, uh, the, uh, did you have any other guilty pleasures? I do. And you might, you might disown me when I tell you, but okay. I actually enjoy watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Mm. I don't know what it is about that show or that family. It's like one of those things where I love, it's like I love to hate them. So you kind of hate watch it or you just? I, a little bit. And it, and I feel I feel the the 
the war going on inside me <laughs> every and time I watch it because it's like, why are you watching this crap? Why are you watching this crap? I just want you to know I'm paying attention, but I'm looking for my uh, disowning forms. So, <laughs> but um, I mean, I think there's other people that do that too. Because uh, my sister, she'll watch um, any of the not any of the housewife shows, but the uh -huh. Real Housewives, and I think she does it to kind of maybe hate on it, but then she just finds herself still watching it anyway. Right. Just, and you just right. kind of get involved in their characters. Or... Right. And you just you just can't seem to turn the channel i mean and i'm, I'm mainly I, I would like to to say and to add to this hopefully this changes your mind and everyone else's mind about me okay. um <laughs> that um i usually uh, whatever i usually only watch it if there's nothing else on mm. so you know but then i still am like wow this is really interesting oh my god no it's not they're not doing anything but they are i'll say that um I want to say it's fan excuse number 25 that there's nothing else on <laughs> because there is, I mean, we live in an age where there's like 800 TV channels and mm -hmm. then you have cable and then you have Netflix and then you, you know, can just go outside. Um. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I hear you, but when it all comes down to it, you know, and the Kardashians are on my TV, and it's like a Sunday, and I'm being lazy. Meaning you turned there. <laughs> or the channel got stuck there. Oh, and the it, was, it was left on from the uh -huh. night, from the time before. It, exactly, and the yeah. remote's across the room or something. Because I so. think I, I know enough about the show. I think it's on E, and E, I mean, this can actually lead into a rant, which I will indulge in for once. <laughs> um E hasn't really been the channel it used to be when I first started watching it many, 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 many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the same for what used to be the Learning Channel um, that also has Slippery many slope. shows. Oh, goodness. Um, the History Channel, which used to have history shows. <laughs> and the Weather Channel, which fortunately has gone back to the Weather Channel because that for one, actually, I don't know, for a little while they actually started showing movies about mm -hmm. weather-related events, and I'm like, can yeah, you just show that. me my local on the 8th so I can know what yeah. to do for the day? But mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. So that that's just a little bit of a rant of what was going on. And every once in a while I'll have a problem when the Cartoon Network shows something that's not a cartoon. But. You know, I never understood that. I, you know, I, can, I, I didn't understand it when the Weather Channel did it, but not really because at least what they were, the movies that they were showing were weather-related. Okay. It's a stretch, but it okay. Yeah. But the Cartoon Network, literally going back on their word to their viewers and playing a live action anything, mm -hmm. that's just stepping. That's just going too far, I think. It is because I want all cartoons all the time. I don't care if I'm not watching, but I just want to know that if I turn there, there right. better be something animated. It needs to be. It needs to be available twenty four seven because that's what they're promising with their title alone. Right. So I, I'm, I feel you on that. I'm not a huge, I, I watch cartoons, but I'm not huge into it. But I, I feel your pain, my brother. I, I feel you. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't been watching, I mean, I haven't watched that channel in a long time. Although I've heard they actually do have some good cartoons lately. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't really subscribed. Actually, I, I, the last one I watched was Adventure Time. But um, mm. uh, there are a couple other ones. I've, I think I'm hearing good things about Steven Universe. Steven Universe. I was going to ask you about that. I haven't. I tried watching a little bit of it, and I don't know if my mind just wasn't in the right place. I couldn't really get into it, but mm. I'll, I'll give it another try because I keep hearing fantastic things about it. Likewise, so that'll I guess that'll be my homework assignment, and then I will we'll follow up see if you know compare notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I realize I also did not really reveal any of my guilty pleasures. Yeah, go. Yeah, you didn't. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I thought I was gonna get out free. No. Uh, I wouldn't have brought it up unless I had something to bring to the table as well. So, um, although I have tweeted about it, and I do admit fully to watching it, but the last uh, year, this last year with all the new TV shows, I didn't think I was going to enjoy a show called Jane the Virgin, but okay, it okay. actually is very entertaining and very funny. Um, mm -hmm. It's... I don't know, and, and it's great to see some uh, Latin Americans on TV for once. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know, it, it, it really surprised me because it, it brought the drama and then it also brought the comedy and, like, you know, trying to tug on the heartstrings. Not mine, but I'm just saying I saw their reports like, okay, if, you know, 
I was a little bit more sensitive. Maybe a tear might have shed out there at that scene. <laughs> um, another show that actually just finished this past, uh, actually a couple weeks ago, and I actually haven't watched most of it this season, but a uh, straight-up soap opera called Revenge that started, like I think, four years ago. Mm-hmm. And I just watched it out of curiosity, and before I knew it, I was watching it every year or every night that it was mm-hmm. on. Um and it's totally catered pretty much, I guess, to women, I guess. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I just found just the drama and, like, I guess this maybe is, could be why people watch, like, the reality shows that, mm-hmm. like, maybe the Kardashians because they have these kind of dramas or fights or whatever. Mm-hmm. But at least mm-hmm. with this, it's scripted, so I know, like, oh, look at the twist. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, it pays out later, whereas I'm, I, I, I'm kind of judging or being biased without really, you know, watching the Kardashians, so I don't really know if they have twists and they pay out later. You've never watched later. the Kardashians? I've never have. I've only just, I don't even know if they have like a theme song or what their like title screen looks like. I don't, <laughs> I don't know any of that. I avoid oh, it like, like, it's a, like it's a plague. I see. I see because even people who don't watch the show have some kind of, I mean, it's, it's reality based, meaning, you know, I don't know if none of, I, I'm sure there are some scripted parts. I don't know. I don't that, know but... That's something I've heard where they'll was like, okay, now this time we want you, Courtney, to uh-huh. just, you know, throw a vase at her instead of the bread. So I don't know. Well, that's how I feel like all reality TV is anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's actually a show that I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. It's, it's called Unreal. I think it's well, I think it's called Unreal on Lifetime. Mm, okay. I think it's... I might have recently saw an article about it. but I... Uh-huh. Well, it's very new. I think it's only like the third or so week that they've aired it. But it's it's basically um, looking at the behind the scenes of um, a reality show. And the reality show on the actual show is is kind of a parody of The Bachelor, where they it's one of those love shows where they meet the people and they send them off and you know. <laughs> but it's just really interesting because it it basically confirms everything I've ever thought about reality TV and granted it's a fiction show I don't know how much of it is true mm-hmm. or based in based in truth but I mean it looks it I don't know I just have always seen reality shows as um, big productions that they try to come off as somewhat of the truth and I just I've always been able to see through the BS I guess right yeah um, there was one that I did watch which I could clearly tell was they tried to pass it off as a reality show, and you could clearly see that it wasn't. And that was um, when uh, CeeLo and actually the whole Goody Mob, they had a, uh, a short, short-lived short reality show. I can't remember what it was. Uh, the Good Life, I think. Yeah, The Good Life. Or was it The Good Life? Hey, I think that's what it was called. Hmm. Huh. Well, but, I remember. I never watched it, but I remember the. Sh- I remember the show that he was on, and I remember that it didn't last long, and it got horrible, horrible, horrible reviews. Hmm. I never read the reviews, but I did watch it. I think most of the episodes, and I knew it was going to be a short because I think they they planned for it to be a short season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apparently, it was. I, I guess you're saying it had horrible reviews, so I guess we won't be seeing it again. Well, I heard, and yes, you're right. It is called the Good Life, or was called the Good Life. Um, but I don't know. I just see that just quick research saying it's, it's, it was canceled, like you said, and hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, but they clearly um, they were doing things specifically for the camera because they uh, CeeLo was invited to throw out the opening pitch, I think probably for the Atlanta Braves or something, mm-hmm. and the, throughout that whole episode, he had to learn how to throw a good enough or decent pitch, so he mm-hmm. was doing, he was at a uh, uh, baseball field, just practicing. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the other um, Goody Mob members were there trying to help him out, and clearly, you kind of know the you you might not know them in real life, but you're thinking like, okay, these guys wouldn't really be doing this in real life. So, right, so right. So you had to again suspend your disbelief a little bit, uh-huh. and kind of just watch it as a comedy, which it was, and I found it entertaining. So, mm-hmm. yeah. okay, is that your guilty one of your guilty pleasure shows? I suppose, maybe because I, I was one that might have went against the grain a little bit, and like, hey, I like the show, and everybody else like, boo, so, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I, I guess we can put I that think, under I think pleasure. you, yeah, I think you should look, put that on the list. All right, it's, that counts. It, it's included, all right, it's on the okay. list, guilty pleasure. All right, all right. But, uh, once again, uh, how can we contact you, just to, like, you know, 
if we want to um, just see what you're up to or maybe make an appointment of, uh, you know, being shot, not by a gun, but, you know, by <laughs> cameras or whatever. Um, you have contact information? Any plugs you want to plug? Sure. I'm on Twitter. Um, I'm very active there. Um, it's it's uh, at I M K Hinton. That's H I N T O N. So I M K the letter K Hinton. Um, I'm on Facebook as uh, um, Courtney Hinton Images, um, and my website is CourtneyHinton.com, and Courtney is spelled K O R T N E Y. So CourtneyHinton.com is my photography page. And uh, as soon as the new business and new blog are launched, I will definitely let you know. And you can tell everybody because I don't oh, even know. Oh, you mean you as in me. Not, you, not, you know, right, gotcha. as in you, Sterling. So, right. gotcha. yeah, I don't even know what that stuff is yet. So, you know, you'll be, you'll, you'll get the word <laughs> when I get the word. I mean, we, we had you on the show just so you could talk about this new business and you don't even have a plug for it yet? <laughs> no. <sighs> Most likely, you know, I'm trying to keep things simple. So most likely, you know, the tags on Twitter and everything will stay the same. That's my hope because I just can't deal with, you know, too many, too much. So, you know, just hmm. follow me along there and then, you know, we'll learn together. Sounds sounds great. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, and other things that you have in your future because you are very, very talented. You're doing a lot of things. Um, hopefully you still remember to sleep and maybe eat what something sleep? once in a while. What is, I won't miss a meal, but I don't know what sleep is these days. Sleep usually is when you close your eyes and you usually go unconscious. Um, okay. Dreaming that might happen. Amazing. That sounds amazing. It, it can be. Sometimes it might be a little <laughs> frightening because we intake so much information that all of a sudden all the information just replays in your head in some crazy <laughs> way. And it doesn't make yeah. any sense. So, so when you do find sleep, Watch out for that. That's called dreaming. Sometimes it might be a nightmare. Um, oh, so, I've heard of those. Yeah, those are those are a little si uh, a bad side effect of sleeping that can happen. Mm. So, but hopefully you get you get to the sleeping part because then you you're supposed to wake up feeling refreshed and <laughs> rejuvenated and, and ready, ready for the day. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So okay, maybe you might well. not have it. Maybe or do you have batteries? Do you run on or? <laughs> if that's the case, I need to be recharged. I need to be rebooted. No, <laughs> I'm a really, I'm a real human girl. I promise you. Mm, okay. Most days, most days. I'm about to say, I'll have to call you Eva. That would be an inside joke for a few of us. <laughs> but um, yeah. Great to see you though. <laughs> Good callback. Yes. Yeah. Good job. I see what you did there. Yeah. Ten points for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you once again for being on the show, and hopefully we'll have you back. Um, maybe after your business starts, you know, like. In July, August, okay. or something. No pressure, though, right? Yeah, no pressure. I'll have you in the middle of November when you're in the middle of writing something. <laughs> That's just cruel, man. That's just cruel. <laughs> That's how I like to play, just, just uh, down and dirty. But down dirty. Right. thanks again for being on the show. And, you're uh, welcome. Thank you for having me. We will meet again soon. All right. Once again, I'd just like to thank my lovely, talented guest, uh, the Miss Courtney Hinton, for being on the podcast. And again, she will be on the next episode. Uh, on a spoiler edition for Sense8. So make sure you catch up and watch that show, if that is a show that you're interested in watching, but that's what we'll talk about next week. Um, so yeah, follow her on Twitter, uh, check out her website, and you know if you are in the area and you need some photos done, then she's definitely somebody to, to get in contact with. And also all the writing, she, she does some lovely writing too. So um, Also, yeah, follow me on Twitter. I am also on Twitter, by the way. At Indoob, I-N-D-O-O-B. Uh, that is also the way to get to my website, which is Indoob.com, I-N-D-O-O-B. I think I spell it each and every time, so hopefully you should get it by now. It's, it's fairly easy. I mean, the only other way you could spell it would probably be I-N-D-U-B-E, but it's, no, let's not do that. So without anything else, I think I've got everything off my agenda. Um, I would check with my secretary chief, but he is no longer in the room. So I guess that's that. Um, I guess it's just time to say goodbye. So goodbye, and remember, if the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off. The Intel Podcast was recorded on planet Earth. 
and produced somewhere in the state of Connecticut. This has been another 3SFX production. Good boy.